Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight, another quick tip in Orca Slicer. We're going to talk a bit more about sequential printing, making sure your parts are in the right order so that you avoid any collisions and maybe optimize some of your, um, your print times. So I print the part here on the screen quite a bit. Uh, I print hundreds of these a year and the, the tolerances, especially in this part, are very, very important. Um, especially the hole right here in the middle uh, is super important. So it's about 35 thousandths of an inch or just a little less than a millimeter in diameter. And that thing needs to come out pretty much perfect. If it's closed up, it's a junk part. If it's too small, I can drill it out. If it's too big, it's a junk part. So I try and get this as close as possible. I want to peel this thing off the bed, assemble it, throw it in a box and say goodbye. <clears throat> and what I've noticed is, and, and you can see here, I'm, I'm in my um, print sequence by layer. So the quote unquote normal way to print, uh, where it's basically got a bunch of travel, right? It's doing a layer here, coming over here, doing a layer on this part, coming back and forth. And all that back and forth is what I have found seems to be a bit of a problem with maintaining the tolerance around that hole that's, that's desired. All of these blue lines that we see in here is all travel. Um, in fact, you can see here in your, in your line type print preview, if you come down here and tick on your travel, you can see there's nine minutes of just the head moving around. It's not printing. It's just travel, right? That's all it is. There's no printing happening while travel's happening. So you've got excess of nine minutes of travel time, just rolling around the part. You've got spiderweb stuff in here, all that good stuff. But really it's those first few layers where I'm printing this part that, that caused me the biggest headache and I wanted, and I wanted to solve it. And so the way I solved it was basically changing my print sequence simply over to by object. You don't get your normal time-lapse or anything in there, which is okay in my case, because I'm in production mode. I don't care about time-lapse. And if we re-slice, we'll notice a little bit of a difference. The print time on this one was an hour and 18 minutes. When we do it by object, the print time is an hour and 12 minutes. So it's a six minute savings, which isn't colossal, but if you're doing a, a longer print or, or a bigger model, then it could be a, a decent time savings. And you can see that the travel time on this has gone down from nine minutes all the way down to three minutes. So we've cut that six minutes out and it's purely almost all on the travel time. And what I've noticed again, is that the quality of this part comes out perfect. Uh, I don't have to do any post-processing, it comes out great. And in that avoidance of all that additional travel back and forth is what has made the difference. So the way you wanna make sure you set this up is, and it matters the order in which they show up under your by objects list over here. So on the left, instead of global, you're gonna go by object. And you can see here, I've got this part, which is, if we go ahead and back over to preview, the one highlighted here is this insert. And then here is the main big body here. Um, and so if this is down here, then you can see now it's gonna try and print this, this bigger body first, and it's gonna try and print the smaller body second. And you can see it's already got an arrow. It's like, hey, that's too tall. You're gonna get a collision. You need to go fix it. It's a simple click and drag. All you need to do is take whatever your shortest part is, uh, and if you have, um, you know, progressively taller parts, you just want to put them in the right order. But essentially, if I just move the short part above, come on, move that above the tall part. Uh, now my error message goes away. I can slice the bed and I can send it off to the printer and I get a much, a much cleaner quality part. I have less stringing. I have uh, tighter tolerances. Uh, I have a part that I can basically, like I said, strip off the bed, throw it in a, assemble it and throw it in a box and good to go. So uh, I hope you have a use case where you can do something like this, where you've got multiple parts rolling through and that it's useful to you. Uh, do me a favor and like and subscribe and we'll have another one here shortly. Thanks a lot.